Hey guys, it's Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be going over the do's and don'ts of how to use liner gel or just regular liner nail polish. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically a smaller bottle of gel or regular nail polish. And instead of that wide normal brush, you're going to get a small skinny liner brush. So these are great for more intricate work, details, or just nail art overall. In the past year, these have become so popular. So many brands have them now, and they come in pretty much every color you can think of, glitters, even reflective glitters. And most of the time they are gel nail polish, but there are a few with regular nail polish out there. Typically, I do buy my liners from Amazon. They have so many on there, so I did put together a few of my favorites on my storefront, so I'll have that link down below for you guys. You can also just order them from a brand's website, so Kira Sky, McCart, Beatles, D&D are just a few that also sell them. And usually they do come in a set or kit that has a specific color scheme or theme, which I really like. And I did find some regular nail polish liners at Sally Beauty Supply, so that's also an option. Okay, so let's get into how to actually use these. When you first pull that brush out, you're gonna have a lot of polish on there and it's just more than you need. It's gonna make it more difficult to draw lines and control where the polish is going. So I try to wipe off a majority of that polish from the brush and then also the handle part of the brush because if that has too much polish, it's gonna kind of drip while you're doing your nails and you don't want that. So I just kind of roll it against the edge of the bottle to remove that. You can also just wipe the brush along the side of the bottle like this or do a little spinning motion to remove that excess polish. Something you may notice over time, after all that wiping, the polish may kind of seep toward the bottom and start to ooze out of the lid. So whenever that happens, I'll just use a makeup sponge and rubbing alcohol and wipe the lid off. And then if it's regular nail polish, I'll use nail polish remover. But either way, I would avoid using cotton balls just so you don't have little cotton pieces stuck on the lid. Another thing to look out for, sometimes you may get a loose little bristle that sticks out of the side or at the top of the brush. And this can make a difference when you're trying to do nail art. So I'll just take some scissors and cut it off to make sure everything's even. Finally, we are on the first example. I already wiped off my brush, so it's ready to go. And I'm just drawing random lines on my nails. As you can see, it just it makes it so much easier to do. And I like to kind of cure my nail as I go. And the main reason is because I don't wanna risk messing up a line that I already did. So I'll draw one or two lines and then cure my nail underneath my lamp. You don't even have to do a full time. You can just kind of flash cure it for 10 or 15 seconds and then keep doing your nail. And another reason I like to do this is especially when I'm about to cross over a line. Again, I just, I don't wanna mess up what I already did because that's just gonna make me sad. So I mean, technically this is optional, but it is something that has really helped me out. Once you are done with your design, you can go ahead and cure that for the full time, finish off with the top coat and you are done. So let's get into a few things that you don't wanna do. Here, I just, I pulled the brush out. I didn't wipe it off or anything and I'm just going for it. This is, way too much polish. One, this isn't even gonna cure properly. Two, it's literally a puddle on my nail, dripping off the brush. This is just not going to work. I tried to spread it out and it, just make sure you wipe off your brush. But on the other end of that, you don't wanna wipe off your brush to the point where it's dry. So right here, I just wiped off pretty much all of the nail polish to where I can't even draw a line. So unless you're going for a dry brush look, make sure there's still some polish on there. Shaky hands, I know my hands still get shaky sometimes when I'm trying to draw a line. Here's a tip for you. You can kind of take it and instead of moving the hand that you're drawing with, move the finger that's resting on whatever you're doing your nails on. And that way you can kind of keep it steady and make your finger draw the line for you. I hope that makes sense, but it is something that really helps, especially when you're drawing horizontal lines. So when you're drawing your lines, here's a few ways to kind of control what you're drawing. So if you want that thinner line like this, you want to press lighter against the nail and clean off a good amount of that nail polish away from the brush. If you want it a little bit thicker, I'll add a little more nail polish and push down a little more. And then if you want it even thicker, I kind of start just drawing lines next to each other to get that bigger shape. So that's pretty much the basics for your typical line, but there are so many ways you can use these liners. You've probably seen it, but swirls. Swirls have been pretty much everywhere for the past year, maybe two years, and I love it. And I think that's why these became so popular because these are like the go-to thing to use and they're so much fun. If you haven't tried them, you really should. And when I do these, I try to use a lighter hand, that way the brush can kind of move and 
swoop easier. And if you decide you wanna use another color right next to the previous one, make sure you're curing your nail first and then you go in with your second color. Here, I'm just following that same shape and using that first color as my guide. And you can do the swirls with regular nail polish too. You just wanna make sure that that first color dries first before going in with the second. Again, once you're done with your design, you're gonna cure that under your lamp, finish off with the top coat, and you are done. A quick don't example, I did my blue swirl, and instead of curing my nail, I just went right in with my second color. And one, this might just mess up the line that you already made, and two, the colors may mix together and you may get the first color onto your brush and you just you don't want that so make sure you're curing in between colors another way i just love using these liners is with the classic french tip so what i like to do is draw a slightly thicker line along my smile line and then i'll take it and just drag up that excess polish to fill in the tip area this has been my go-to method there are honestly so many ways to do this but liners are just so good for this they make it so easy to put it exactly where you want it and just kind of slide it across it's great you can do literally any French tip with this the outline the color block the double French the inverted French the V cut anything you can think of liner gels telling you this purple tip did end up being a one coater and a lot of times you will find that these liner gels and polishes are really pigmented so you can typically get away with one coat, but the lighter colors, for example, this one did end up being a two coater for me. And just like a regular gel nail polish, you never wanna rush trying to, I guess, get that full coverage. So if it's two coats, do two coats, because if you try to just rush and do one really thick coat, it's gonna end up looking globby, maybe not even cure properly, and just, it's not worth it. So I'm going to do my first coat, cure it, and then go in with my second coat for this one. Again, this was so easy to do and turns out really cute. So here's a quick don't. As I mentioned before, trying to just pile on the polish. This is way too thick. It's giving that bubble effect and this is just going to end up chipping really fast. So take your time working thin coats. Lighter gels are also good for larger areas too. So if you want to do a half nail or a color block look, these can be used. And what I like to do is initially put more nail polish on the brush and then spread it around. And this just helps the process go a little bit faster. So it still ends up being a thin coat, but I can cover the area quicker, which leads to the next way these can be used. And honestly, I don't typically use these for this reason, but you can paint your entire nail using a liner. I personally, this takes too long. So unless I just, I really wanna use the liner color or if my nails are really, really short, this would be a good method, but long nails or just time-wise, I don't think this is worth it because the brush is so small, you know? But if you decide to do this, just work in thin coats. This was a two coater, so I did the first layer, cured it, and then went in with the second one. So everything I've shown you guys so far can also be done with regular nail polish liners and the next two examples are using those. So again, you can use these to cover your entire nail. With regular nail polish though, you really have to work quickly because if it starts drying before you cover your nail, it's gonna be really hard to get an even layer and it might get a little bumpy. So if you're a beginner, I would stay away from this, but if you wanna try it, you can still try it. I won't stop you. <laughs> also, even just doing the swirls or a French tip with the regular nail polish liners, I don't wanna say it's harder, but you can't take your time as much as with the gels. That's why I think gel nail polish is a little bit more forgiving, and you can also wipe off your mistakes with gel nail polish too. Glitter gradients. I just realized how great these are to do with glitter liners. This one is also regular nail polish, and what I like to do is just start by putting the nail polish on the top and then slowly dragging it down the nail, and then I'll take the end of the liner and just make little dots of glitter. And then once that dries, I'll go in and add more nail polish to the tip. With the liners, you get a lot more control of where the polish is going so you can be more precise and it gives you a better gradient look. So I would definitely recommend doing these. So those are some of the main ways I use liners. Honestly though, I could do an entire nail art video just using liners because there's so many things you can do. But I hope these tips and tricks helped you guys out. If you have any more to add, feel free to comment them down below and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.